everybody. Uh, you can probably hear in the background, my daughter's in the kitchen cleaning up. <laughs> Running water, my grandson's in the bedroom watching a movie. So we could have a little bit of a noisy day today, but that's okay because here we are. And it's the last, the very, very last day of the year of 2020. So first of all, can I say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who is always by my right side. Uh, I'd like to say good morning to you, Chris. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and anyone else who might want to pop in or out, you might see my daughter flitting around. You never know what's going to go on today. But uh, Chris, uh, how is your last day of the of this lovely uh, 2020? So many people will be pleased to see the back of it, won't they? They will. But um, my day started off great with little kitten antics. So I had a great belly laugh to start my day. Good. I cannot hear you uh, very loudly. I don't know if there's any way you can put your sound up there. Mine's up, darling. That's mine's up there. So uh, mine's, my sound's up as far as it'll go. Um, so, uh, all right. Well, we'll just uh, deal with it, Chris. So you're, so last minute panic for everybody out there listening. Chris's internet went down, right, Chris? It did, just before we came on. <laughs> There's always something, right? <laughs> it's, it's what makes life exciting. So uh, tell me about your Christmas. My Christmas was quite quiet. I'm sorry, but I can't, just cannot hear you. I'm not sure what to do about that, Rosemary. Okay, you lean a little bit closer into the microphone, maybe? Oh, the microphone <laughs> right on my headset. No, this is the best I'm going to do. Okay, all right. Well, we'll live with it then. Uh, okay, so you had a good Christmas. What did you do? Uh, we played uh, Santa's Helpers on Christmas Eve for a few people that um, had a really tough year. And we went for a nice walk and we cooked a nice dinner. Oh, that sounds really nice. Well, we had a house full of people. I know it's COVID, but we were, when I say a house full, we had plenty of people eating at the table. And uh, Reese had a really great Christmas. And uh, so we had a really, really lovely Christmas day. But the rest of this week has been a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, shall I tell the story, Chris? <laughs> I think you should. I'm laughing because we seem to have come over the hurdle, over that major hump. But Reese, on the day after uh, Christmas, I think it was, or the day after that or something, had a spider bite. Uh, his leg swelled to enormous proportions. It was bright red. Uh, it was uh, it was a nightmare. Fortunately, my daughter has a friend who is a pediatrician, so we got some uh, advice from her. We got some antibiotics, but nothing was working. Uh, on and on this story goes. He was in a great deal of pain. He's only seven years old, and it's awful to see a seven-year-old when they're screaming in pain, isn't it? But he was in a great deal of pain. And uh, we took him to the emergency. They wouldn't let me in. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it was uh, Samantha and Reese who were allowed in, um, which was a bit frustrating. And uh, when she got in there, she found out that it was going to be, well, this is what they told her. I, I wish, Chris, that there was something that we could do a bit about this. And I wish for anybody out there listening, I wish there was something that we could do about this to walk through the hospital doors without any treatment whatsoever. Once you have signed a piece of paper that you want to register to see a doctor, not for treatment for a doctor, $700 right there. That is the beginning of your bill. And then of course, on top of that, you've got doctors and anesthetists and the medications and, and the nurses and so on and so forth. And, um, Luckily, uh, but when we when uh, my daughter went in there, she was told, well, it's not ready yet. 
for us to do anything about it. You've got to leave and it's another day. Go, go home and come back tomorrow. Uh, which meant uh, walking out of the hospital, who knows what the bill is by this time, at least $1,000, right? Uh, coming out of the hospital and walking back in the next day to pay another $700 for another visit to the hospital and so on and so forth. And now you're up to 2000 or maybe even $3,000. Chris, you know, I'm British. We can walk into a hospital and we don't have to think about money at all. We're only thinking about the situation at hand, which is why are you in the hospital in the first place? Uh, well, you're in a hospital, generally speaking, because you're sick and you need treatment and you need help. And who's going to look in their purse to see if they can afford to have that help? But it is, it's, it's sort of so concerning to me. And, the, and we had Obamacare, which, let me tell you, does not work. We had all sorts of other care. We've had Trump care. That didn't work. We've had so many things that actually don't work because when you come to that one singular moment, you have a child. Forget about the adults just for a second. You have a child who is in tremendous pain, who needs help, and you're hesitating at the door because you do not have the $700 plus all of the extras uh, to, to help this child. Chris, I mean, I don't get it. Uh, the whole of Europe has a system. I know France has a system. Uh, Germany has a great system. Uh, many of the uh, Latin countries have a great system. Are they perfect? They are not. However, is this perfect? It is not. How, how, I mean, what can we do about this? I feel as if I should start a campaign here. I think people have been working on this for a long time and there's pluses and minuses to every system. Um, and then you're going to go globally when you look at budgets for different countries. What are you going to take away to put toward this? So it's not yes, something you, you Chris, and I will solve. Chris, I, I'm sorry to cut in because I'm so tired of people talking about budgets and what works and what doesn't work. I'm so tired of this hearing this not not you know not just experiencing it just this week with my own grandson but i'm so tired of hearing about people who will not go to the hospital because they're terrified of the bills there should be at the very very minimal there should be in place an emergency come in we'll treat you the best we can we'll give you this and then we'll give you some options if you need to carry that treatment on but not one single person on this planet should be afraid to go to the hospital because they can't afford the treatment. It is appalling in this day and age. We've sent rockets to the moon, for goodness sake. We've sent people all over the world and on major discoveries. We spend trillions of dollars every year, every single year we spend trillions of dollars, um, you know, sort of researching. And some of that research, yes, might be good for us, but really, come on, there should be something in place whereby if there is a true emergency and if, you know, if it's a, a matter, especially for our children and for our old people, there should be a system in place where you don't even have to think twice. You go in there and the fees are waived uh, and people should not be afraid if it's continued and um, i we have a friend you and i both chris we have a friend whose son has a horrible disease and going from this insurance company to that insurance company trying to get trying to get uh, help is has been a nightmare my daughter yesterday went to five five different pharmacies one she was told was closing down. They can't help her try this one. She tried that one. Oh, no, we don't take that insurance. Well, you have to go to so-and-so. She went to so-and-so. Oh, no, we can't do anything because you had this medication yesterday and that doctor told you to throw it away, so you're not entitled to it anymore. And then another pharmacy, five pharmacies, and the day is ticking away, 
and my grandson needs antibiotics, needs them. Not, it's not just a little whim here, needs the antibiotics. His leg is swelling to ridiculous proportions and she's traipsing New York City looking for a pharmacy that number one will take the, the insurance card that she has, number two, that has the medication that he needs. Chris, don't you think it's time to stop talking and it's time to worry about, it's time to stop worrying about budgets and it's time to, for all of those people who are so willing to spend money on road improvements and, and sending scientists out into space, don't you think it's time that we sort of the people on our planet and put the money where it's going to do the most good for people? I think we should always put the money where it's going to. I can't. I actually people. can't hear you. You've gone. You've faded away here. I said I do think we should be putting our money toward whatever is best for people. Well, let's try the healthcare system. Right, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> I'm not preaching anymore. It is the last day of. 2020 it's been a grueling grueling year for so 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 many people and we've had covid which i think is turning a corner a little bit but it's still out there and uh we're back to health again i'm not going to go any more about not talking any more about health but i would like people's comments and wouldn't it be wonderful if we had somebody watching this show who had a bit of clout who had a little bit of power who actually listened and said you know, she's right, let's do it. If we got a group of people together who just literally said, let's just do it, then then we do it and it wouldn't be an issue anymore. It amazes me, people who have the money, they have the power, they have the knowledge, they have the know-how, they know who to connect with. It seems to me that they always get what they need and what they want. So come on, everybody out there who's sort of not, uh, you know, not, not sort of, um, what can I say? Uh, not, not full of self-interest. Let's get on with this. Let's see what we can see. If you've noticed that I'm starting to squint a bit, and if you've noticed that the light's <laughs> gone a bit brighter around me, it's because my daughter's behind here. We have a new little sort of thing. I don't know what it's called. It's called a light. And uh, she keeps playing with it and making it brighter and brighter. Now she's moving the stand away. And now the whole thing has fallen down. Would you go away and stop playing with my new toy? She bought me this Can you see so? Yeah, we're just about. That's, that's really good. Now leave it alone. You have to go away, Samantha. Unless, do you want to come in and talk to us? No. Got to say hello. She's in shorts and a t-shirt this morning. You wouldn't think that we're in New York and it's freezing cold because today it isn't. Chris, how are we doing? I think you're doing great. With your comments, there are, of course, many comments of experiences people have had with healthcare. Right. So shall we have some of those? Sure. Uh, RT says, I've worked in healthcare in England and Ireland as a care assistant. I agree with you 100%. Warm wishes to you and your daughter and grandson. Oh, thank you. Uh, Terry says the CEO of UPMC Pittsburgh makes eight point nine million a year. That seems to be a problem there. Yeah, you betcha. But right there, can we put this money into making sure that every person on this planet, certainly in America, where I mean, you really—it's a night. It is really and truly an absolute nightmare. Uh, we just had a, you could say it was a small spider spider bite with Reese, but it was actually became, uh, it got to that point of um, cellulitis or whatever they say it was, but it got to a point of being dangerous. When you're trying to run around, you've got a child at home who is really sick. You're trying to run around the city, trying to find someone, a pharmacist. You know, and where are the doctors here? Don't they take an oath? Does it not mean anything to them? I know that all of you doctors out there are listening. I do sympathize with you because when my daughter told her story to the hospital, 
those doctors and nurses did everything in their power to ensure that she didn't have to walk through those hospital doors again and spend another seven hundred dollars unnecessary dollars and they were absolutely amazing so i'm not but if all of the doctors got together if all of the nurses banded together if all of us grandmothers and grandparents got together and if we sort of could create this this has to be because quite frankly a wonderful that we went to the moon but i don't care when my grandson is screaming in agony i don't care um people i can see that there are benefits i can see that there are benefits to science but really and truly come on uh, we've got our priorities absolutely wrong here uh yeah keep going chris all right maggie says i won't go unless i really have to go because they will send you home saying you are not sick enough i see it as they want the insurance over care yeah i went and was sent home four times I waited a while until I was sick enough and was told I had walking pneumonia. The last doctor asked why I didn't come in earlier. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't win. And oh, Maggie, I've had walking pneumonia. Um, actually, I've, I've had it for the last five years. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this is, have you noticed, Chris? This is the first Christmas that I haven't been sick in over five years. This is the first. Of course, now speaking about it, I'm going to get to this. I was going to say, don't but, talk, don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, uh, you know, I try very hard not to go to the doctor, but I'm not really so much concerned with those of us who can make our own decision, decisions. I'm talking about the elderly who have no recourse and are very often no one to help them and no one to be their support system. You have children who cannot be their own support system. And you have families, especially with COVID this year, you have so many families out of work, no money whatsoever. And the idea of a child getting sick, wow, you know, that's just impossible. And, and you know, it's the same with pets as well. Um, speaking of which, Kachoro had a really awful night last night, which means that I had a really awful night last night. Um, my daughter didn't have such a great night <laughs> what with the dog and the kid <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't doing that well but guess what we, we we've survived it all we've survived <laughs> okay um maggie says the medical doctors are used to getting large sums of money and putting the raising of medical demands christina says my husband got in a snowmobile accident. It cost over $250,000. We only spent co-pays and a $1,000 spend down. We got blessed to have decent insurance. Yes, you were very blessed. But, you know, no one should have to face that. No one at all should have to face that, uh, that situation. And there are people who are out of jobs, lost their jobs, through no fault of their own, and now do not have insurance of any kind, or they have insurance but they can't get it till January the first. And and uh, I mean, I hear I hear these stories from so many different people. It should not be. I, I remember once uh, I was with friends in England, my friends Baron and Pam, and I was with them in England, and and another British friend of mine. We were staying with her, and I became extremely ill i was uh, taken by ambulance to the hospital uh my uh, my friends uh, sort of were with me and um it was it was uh, in a in a way it was amusing because one of uh, one of my friends um marianne she's very uh, organized she she said i'm i'm in a wheelchair i'm in absolute absolute agony i'm really ill and i hear her say i'll I'll go to the desk and start the paperwork. <laughs> and I was too sick to say to her, no, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then my British friend came in. She'd been, she'd just had parked the car and she came in and uh, she said to Marianne, you know, what are you talking about? What paperwork? And Marianne said, well, you know, the paperwork, the insurance and everything. And my friend said, oh, don't, we don't do that here. We walk in, 
we get treatment. Of course, we pay every uh, you know every week or every month. We pay. Would you please leave this? I alone? can make this lower, and then you can. It'll be better. Hold on, I'll make this lower. <laughs> See. See? Is Will that you, better? Yeah, oh, fabulous. Would you stop? <laughs> now I'm crooked. Uh, Samantha? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lopsided here. Uh, oh, there we are. Is and that now, better? Yes, except my head is now cut off. Look, see? Okay, well, I'm going to raise it up. No, I don't, I don't really. Would you stop? I don't want you to go away. <laughs> it's Christmas. Look, it's Christmas Eve. Chris. <laughs> We are working well, on Christmas Eve. Why? Well, for me, no, no, it's not that. You need to no, no. You need to tilt the camera. Um, <laughs> you've really got to go away. Go away. I was going to say, well, for me, okay, Chris? getting you said, I can read you more comments. Okay, keep going. Is All right. Good? Um, Maggie says she had a spider bite in May that did the same. Antibiotics and cream did not, not work. Sat in a tub of Epsom salt. It oh. hurt at first, but soothed it. Right. Well, oh, Phil. <laughs> go, go away. Hold on. Do you no, I do not want you to touch it anymore. Um, Jackie says they have the same process in Canada. Uh, Bright Star says they have the same process in Holland, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, America is supposed to be the finest country in the world. It's certainly one of the wealthiest countries in the world. So if, if all of these smaller countries can do it, why can't America do it? It, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. All right, uh, let's keep going, Chris. All right, I'm trying to pick out the ones that have to do with this healthcare as a human right subject. Um, Maggie again says, this is an age old problem. I was sick when I was a toddler. Mom took me to the Red Cross. She sat with everyone waiting and a woman in a fur coat walked in and took over the others. My mom walked out and asked my grandparents for money for my care. Awful, how awful. All right, uh, enough of the healthcare situation, enough of all of that. The puppy has been sick all night. <laughs> This is the last week of the year. Uh, I, for one, am looking forward to ringing in the new year. Chris, are you looking forward to ringing in the new year? For me, it's not about the year. I mean, it's, as you say in all of your, everything is attitude programs. Yeah. It's, it's you know, we can't blame it on a year. Oh, That's no. That's all I'll say. No, but a lot of people have had a tough year this year a lot of people have struggled this year a lot of people have had a great attitude and have still struggled this year a lot of people have lost their jobs a lot of people have become sick it has been a tough and a rough year for an awful lot of people uh, i've just had a little bit of a hiccup this week what with one thing and another my year has not been nearly as rough or tough or hard as it has for most people um, so, you know, so my heart does go out to all of you there who are struggling. Uh, just, you know, be patient, hold your breath a little longer. We are turning a corner. The, the uh, vaccine, vaccines are out there. I know of uh, someone who got vaccinated uh, just a few days ago. Uh, and uh, she has to go back for the second vaccine in, a, in a three or four days. She said it wasn't nearly as awful as she thought it was. I know a lot of people are against the vaccine. I don't know which way I shall go if I have to go that route at all. It's for every individual to make up their own minds. And would all of you out there, anybody listening, uh, and all of you who are so lovely as to watch me, uh, share this little piece of information. All of you who are against it or for whatever reason don't care for it and all of you are for it and insisting on it. Could you back off? It's each person's individual choice and no one else, and I mean no one else, has a right to an opinion about it. So keep your opinions, please, to yourself. There. Uh, off the, I promise, Chris, it is the last day of the year. Am I allowed the soapbox this today? <laughs>
I think you're allowed to soapbox for a little bit, but we want to end on a high note, don't we? Well, actually, I think we should no more soapbox, no more health issues, none of that. Uh, let's hear some fabulous stories if we have any of people's Christmases or people's, you know, joys or I think at the end of the year and certainly this last day of the year, I think we should be focusing also on on all of the good things that we've had because those of us who have our health are we not blessed and for those of us who have not had such a good time but are still there still fighting still struggling are you not blessed i think we are all blessed and i think that this on the last day of the year as we always do in our house as in the altea household as my grandson says we actually try to focus the closer it gets to midnight and the closer we get to losing this new year coming out of this sorry coming losing the old year coming out of the old year and into the new year it is i think very very important to focus on what we do have and the good things about the year too so let's go chris what do we have well salvatore started us off with i wish you a peaceful 2021 and i back to you all of you um he also asks, what do spirits say about the new year? Is it true that a new world is coming? Well, I don't think it's necessarily true that there's a new world coming, but I think it's when we talk about a new world, we talk about new, new ideas, new hopes, new changes. Uh, as I said to my daughter just a month ago, our situation here on the earth today is certainly going to get little worse before it gets better but it will get better and what i have seen and this is in the new year so you can say this is new world or you can call it whatever it is you want to call it uh, i do see the phoenix rising and i do see things be becoming in balance as they should be once again uh, I don't think it's a, a, a new world that we're going to be experiencing, but I think perhaps new energy, uh, new, more positive energy from people. I think people are going to be relieved that they've come through this horrible, horrible uh, situation, this health situation, and uh, people are going to be uh, having a better attitude. How long it will last for, I'm not sure. Do you remember when the, the Twin Towers went down and everyone in New York was so nice? It was so weird to walk through the streets of New York City and not hear people honking angrily on in their cars and yelling at each other. And so it was so nice. For, and it lasted for about two or three years until we sort of slipped back into how, how things used to be. Uh, I see this all the time. Um, I had a patient of mine who recovered from cancer he, he really believed that he was going to die and he was terrified and he recovered from cancer and for the first year to 18 months he you know he watched what he ate he did all the right things but slowly surely gradually we go back into our old habits so i'm hoping that when we do have this uh enlightening uh time when the when our in 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 the 2021 when we do get that moment and things begin to rise up and things begin to lighten and brighten, I do hope that we can maintain that and hold on to that and hold on to the vision of positivity and positive, positive energy. Christina says, good morning. Hope you have a blessed and happy New Year's. Oh, Christina, and to you too, and to, to all of you out there, of course, uh, you know this is what we wish don't we chris we wish for everyone to be to be blessed we wish for everyone to have that the the or that even if it's that one moment of defi of divine intervention that one moment of uh, awakening that one moment of uh an angelic presence in your life i think when we were, did our workshop um was it only last Saturday or was it Saturday before? I'm a bit lost, really. Uh, Saturday before, yeah. Pardon? The Saturday before. Right. But didn't we all have that divine intervention, that amazing experience of our angels surrounding us? It was incredible. So I, I do wish for each one of you out there that divine moment of knowing 
of experiencing of light and enlightenment. Yes, well, Chris. Speaking, speaking of that webinar, Caddy says, good morning from Florida. After the angel webinar, which was amazing, especially hearing from Gray Eagle, I asked spirit during a meditation for the name of one of my angels. I immediately received an image of one of the three feral kittens I'm fostering and rehabbing in my mind's eye. I had previously named this one Kitty Angel. Love the validation and bit of humor. I'm so, I'm so, so glad you enjoyed the, the webinar and I'm so, I'm so glad you experienced how wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yes, Chris. Salvatore from Italy is asking us to put on um, closed captioning. So I just want to say that when we're live, closed captioning doesn't show, but it does show uh, once the show is over, you can go back and reread. Okay, great. I hope that Salvador, you understood that. <laughs> um, just one second. Um, I'm scrolling down. Um, Kay is sending her regards to Samantha. Uh, Mark is saying, I love Samantha and somebody else. Let me see if I can find it again. Um, it was quite humorous, actually, I thought. Uh, oh, Vicky saying, oh, mommy has spoken. Laugh out loud. Leave it, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So moving on. Inco, I-N-C-O, says, hi, good luck at everyone. Happy New Year. And then Chelsea's asking a question. Who is? Chelsea. Okay. I'm curious if Gray Eagle has any advice for me on helping a young girl who is 10 years old, who is awakening to psychic gifts. She is encountering spooky and scary spirits coming through as well. I think I know what protection process she needs that she needs to do, but curious if there is any other advice. Well, tread very, very carefully. You can only do this with her parents' permission. So if you do not have her parents' permission and you've taken this on yourself, that's, that's a, a big no right there. Um, Children are very, very sensitive. They see, they hear, they are aware, my grandson included. And um, I think that uh, it's a very, very common thing. Be very careful because sometimes uh, those in the spirit world, they come to show that they, you know, they, they love us, they care for us. A child might see this and be nervous about it or be frightened about it. I had this. I had the conversation actually yesterday with with Samantha and her neighbour, and we were talking about the many experiences that Samantha had when she was a child. Um, you need for the the mother or the father or someone very close to the child to be able to actually sit down quietly and explain with no drama whatsoever, no drama at all. You do it gently, you do it kindly, you do it carefully, and you do it in the presence of the parents, please. Um, you know, if something, just as the smallest something is said that sets the child to thinking that something is to be afraid of, then, you know, you, you, you've spoiled or ruined a particular, uh, you know, sensitive moment. Our children need nurturing and they need caring. They don't need scaring. They need caring. So just think, just think on that. Please be careful. Yes, Chris. Speaking about thinking carefully, Maggie says, I will be the one that gets Bell's palsy with the vaccine, LOL. Thank you for your comment on the vaccine. Okay. All right. Keep going. We're not um, doing any more health stuff. I promised. Okay, I'm going to skip over them then. Simon <laughs> says, Simon says, okay, give us a sing song, Rosemary. You are such a good singer. Oh, um, all right. Well, very quick. <laughs> really? All right. I'll give you a song for the new year. When uh, my grandson, we were having to 
express the the uh, the abscess in his in his leg and uh, oh boy was he screaming and crying it was a, an awful thing and um, whenever I give healing to children I use colors and I use rainbows for them to visualize and my grandson having been able to do this for, for forever really uh, um, I said to him would you like uh, Moses to give you some some rainbows and uh, he he nodded and he sort of started to cry a little bit more and then I said would you like me to sing the rainbows or shall we just visualize the rainbows and he said sing the rainbows Moses so here you go here is a song for you for, for you all <laughs> to, to, to take you into the new year why you want me to sing I've no idea but anyway I will do it for you briefly for my grandson so ready this is a rainbow song. Chris, you can join in and sing if you like, because you should know this song. It's a song that I teach to all of my healers, and it's a song that I uh, recommend for all of you out there who are giving healing to others, because it just is talking about energy, and it's talking about listening, and it really is uh, speaking to visualization techniques. So uh, I don't know how good this is going to be, but anyway, red and yellow and pink and green orange and purple and blue you can sing a rainbow sing a rainbow sing a rainbow too i can't believe you're asking me to sing but anyway listen with your eyes listen with your eyes and sing everything you see you can sing a rainbow sing a rainbow Sing along with me, red and yellow and pink and green, orange and purple and blue. You can sing a rainbow, let's all sing a rainbow for the new year. You can sing a rainbow too. Da -da -da -da, there you go. <laughs> you are, Chris? Well, I can hear Simon and Kay and Sarah, Sorry? I said, I can hear Simon and Kay and Sarah and all your other students singing in the background. Well, I hope they are. I hope they didn't make me sing all by myself. That would be terrible. <laughs> all right. Um, Mark has a question, it looks like. January 1st, 2017, I lost my best friend, my dad. He loved the mother of God and waited for January 1st to pass. I miss him so much, and I know he met my special angel brother G for the first time. Do they have New Year's wishes for me? Well, for the first time, uh, I don't know whether Grey Eagle was uh, was just not listening to me when I was ranting about the hell system or not. But for the first time, Mark, he's put his hand on my shoulder, and you betcha. They, that you know that all of your loved ones in the spirit world wish you a very, very special and a very happy uh, new year. And I'm told to tell you that your father is very close by. Yes, Chris. Maggie's saying, I might make some mimosa cupcakes to ring in the new year. I just found a recipe that is intriguing me. The okay. angel workshop was amazing. In the workshop, I felt a power as well as an enveloping peace. Wow. Well, um, this was the first uh, of our workshops where Grey Eagle will speak, but he has told me that there will be others. So please, all of you who missed out on the first workshop, we are working towards uh, being able to get that video because we did videotape it and we are working towards getting that videotape out and uh, so that people can actually uh, buy it uh, and you'll be able to see for yourself. But for those of you who want to experience more of Grey Eagle, uh, should, what is it we say, Chris? Watch this space. Uh, we shall let you know uh, when Grey Eagle will speak again. Um, I have a, 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 an odd feeling, but no promises, that every time we do a workshop, he might pop in to say something I, I don't know but I, I'm going to be waiting for it. Kay says yes I feel very privileged after Grey Eagle spoke. As as did I 
as did I. Salvatore says, will our spirits be close to us during this night? Do they have special permission? Um, they don't need permission. Uh, uh, our loved ones in the spirit world will draw close to us whenever they, whenever they feel the need to be close to us or whenever they feel that you need them uh, close by. So, um, you know, if you would like them around on this New Year's Eve, uh, just, uh, just lift your eyes and give them an invitation. That's all they need. And uh, even if they don't have an invitation, I think many will be there anyway. Sandy says, this year after the angel webinar, I couldn't help but look at the Christmas tree through a different eye. Now when I see the little twinkling lights, I think of the angels breaking off from God. I love that visual. One of the most uh, profound things that uh, in that webinar that Grey Eagle said, what, when I say one of the most profound things, one of the most profound things for me, because I've never actually heard Grey Eagle explain uh, how angels are created. But when he said, God breaks off a piece of his light and an angel is created, that really still wows me just right gives me chills just thinking about it. All right. Um, Salvatore says, Rosemary, you are the voice of the angels. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to, it's very nice of you to say that, but don't put that on to me. I'm not, I'm not that good. Salvatore, I'm really not that good. Please don't put that on to me. You know what happens? Uh, when you put someone up on a pedestal, sooner or later they will come crashing down. So please don't don't put me on a pedestal. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not so special. Yes, Chris. Cheryl says now that rainbow song will be stuck in my head. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, well, I think. Uh, you can get different variations of the of the rainbow song. I know that there are kids shows that you know they, they certainly. Uh, I think you can get it on YouTube, but I've heard it with um, different music. But I don't like that. But this is my special version, and I'll tell you why. It is such a special song for me, and I use it as a healing song. I can remember many, 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 many years ago when I first began working as a spiritual medium and healer and I had so many questions and uh, you know I I believe a thousand percent in that higher God force in that God that God force that protects and brings light to us all and I was very very concerned that I was going to do something uh, that was a, not of God and so I was continually throughout a number of years asking always making sure that that god I, I felt that god was on board with this that it was that it was that, that what i was doing was the right thing to do and i can remember a bishop in in uh, in the community in which i lived many years ago again uh he came up against people sort of berating me and berating the work that i did and they he, they asked his opinion and his his opinion was uh if it is uh, of God, if it is if it is of the devil, it will uh, wither away and die. If it is of God, it will raise up and prosper. And uh, all of these years later, I think we're prospering here quite a bit. But I remember going to bed one night, and I was particularly concerned and asking uh, Grey Eagle and asking God, "Would you please just give me a just give me a sign that I am." on the side of the angels that I am doing what God wills for me to do. And as I put my head, literally the moment I put my head on the pillow, I heard music. At first it was very, very faint and I had to strain to listen and sort of part way, I sort of sat up in bed trying to listen and realized that in my bedroom, in my, yes, in my own bedroom in England, <laughs> all those years ago, 
uh, there was in my bedroom a choir of angels. I could only describe them as such because their voices were magical beyond beyond anything you could ever reproduce. The purest and the most beautiful sound. And they were singing to me uh, the rainbow song. And the, the part of this rainbow song that is most significant is that part, listen with your eyes. And you might think, well, how, how am I going to listen with my eyes? But we have to listen with every one of our senses. My students will know what, what exactly what I'm talking about right now because we've been listening uh, with our eyes. We've been, uh, we've been seeing uh, with our, every one of our senses. We are fine-tuning our five senses so that those five senses come together to make that sixth sense. Everyone is looking for the sixth sense. The sixth sense is all of our five senses combined. And when you sing the angel, when you see, sing the rainbow song and you, you hear in that song, listen with your eyes and sing everything you see. In other words, listen with your eyes and sing it out is what they were saying to me. Whatever it is that you're seeing, whatever it is that you're hearing, whatever it is that you're feeling, sing it out because this is of God from God. And this is why that particular song means so very much to me because I was fortunate enough to have a choir of angels singing it to me. Yes, Chris. Nuria says, thanks for being there. For sorry, me. I'm sorry, Chris, can't hear you. Nuria says, thanks for being there from Valencia, Spain. Oh, Spain. I was only talking about Spain the other day. I love Spain. I love the Spanish food, let me tell you. Uh, I'd love to be invited back to Spain someday. Anyway, thank you. Yes, Chris. Mark says, thank you, Grey Eagle and Rosemary. This made my new year with gratitude and love. You're very welcome, my darling. Speaking of New Year's, what do you think? Would people want you to teach a course on that possibility poster? You know, shall we do that, Chris? Shall we, shall we, shall we have a, 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 well, it's not really a course, is it? It's just a, I don't know, it's a, a one-time thing. Maybe we'll talk about it. Uh, yes, because, you know, I suggest to people, and especially for the New Year, New Year's resolutions, all of that, all of that stuff, there is a way to make a, a poster. Maybe I shouldn't say any more than this till we've got it set up, Chris, but let's do something in the next week or two, perhaps. Let's see if we can, if, any, if anybody out there is interested, uh, we can make it very affordable. It doesn't have to be expensive at all. We do have to pay for stuff, and I do. Poor Chris, I have to pay for Chris. I, I wish I could afford. I wish I could afford to pay her what she's worth. But hey, I'd never be able to do that because she's worth far more than I can even uh, imagine. But uh, we can make it a very affordable, small sum for people to to learn how to make the possibilities uh, poster. Yes. Shall we, shall, we, shall we discuss, Chris, later on? Yeah, I think so, because, I mean, this is that time of year where we're all looking forward to what's going to happen next year and what can we do to change things for the better. And I know I've done this poster many times over the years, and for me it's a highlight, and the things that I end up putting down on my posters come true. So I think they're better than New Year's resolutions. Well, yes, they are. And, and um, just actually writing things down, just actually doing this in this certain way uh, gives power to what you're thinking. It gives power to the words that you're trying to express. It gives power to the ideas and the possibilities that you may not even be able to see right now. But yes, it is a very powerful exercise. And um, uh, I mean, you can find how to do it in any one of my books but I think talking you through it and helping you through it might be might be uh, more of a validation so watch this space and we'll put it out there for everyone to see uh, okay which is an opportune time to say please if you want to know more about us go to my website rosemaryaltea.com all one word rosemaryaltea.com 
uh, and I'm sure we'll put it up there for you all. Uh, if you would like healing or if you'd like to know more about us, you can either, you can do one of two things. You can, you can email Chris, which is a really good thing to do because she'll get back to you straight away. Uh, email Chris at rosemarialtea.com. Yes? Yes. No, that's not right, is it? No, that's right. Is it Chris at rosemarialtea.com or you can write to me, rosemary at rosemarialtea.com. Uh, it'll go to Chris then, just to let you know. <laughs> go to Chris and then she'll forward it to me, but she'll forward stuff to me anyway. So either Chris at rosemarialtea.com or rosemary at rosemarialtea.com and uh, we'll, we'll sort of keep you informed. And if you want to be on our mailing list, you must request it. We will not automatically put you on there. However, if you go to our website, you can see little videos, you can see all sorts of things, you can see lots of different information. And there is a subscribe button and you click that and that will automatically uh, put you on the mailing list. Uh, you don't have to pay any mon money for it, but it means that we'll just let you know when anything is coming up, when we're doing more events and it'll let you know more about what we're up too so uh yes yeah, so okay chris uh bet is asking a question last night i dreamed of my two dogs a basset hound and a dachshund who died a month apart from each other in my dream they were wagging their tails and they were together yes is this possible without a better it's not only possible it's probable very very probable you know our animals are very very special they have very 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 special senses and sensitivities uh, it's interesting that while reese has been so really really uh, sick um he his uh, my, my daughter my daughter's puppy piper who is also reese's puppy piper uh died a year ago uh thanksgiving so it's just been one year and the other day, uh, we were doing rainbows again. I was giving him some healing. We were doing rainbows. And I saw something out of the corner of my eye. And I thought, shall I say something? And before I even had a chance to say something, Reese said to me, Mosey, there's Piper. I can see Piper. So Piper has been visiting on and off. And... Uh, you know, sometimes kids have imagination, but when I'm seeing it, before I can say it, he says something, I'm going to take that as absolute verification. So our little Piper has been uh, back and forth while uh, through Christmas and while Reese has been so poorly. So yes, of course, that's of course, it's not only possible, it's probable. Yes, Chris. Chelsea says, oh my, how great to hear your voice. I've been reading your books for years, imagining what it would sound like. Well, here I am. And I sang as well. <laughs> I sang as well. Who was it who asked me to sing, Chris? I don't know who it was. It was Simon. Oh, right. Well, Simon, thanks for that. But I hope you joined in the song. <laughs> Cheryl says, I was wondering do we have names before we come to this world? Do we uh, keep our earth names? So many here on this planet have the same name. Um, I actually can hardly hear you, Chris. I'm very, very sorry about it. I think the great big question you asked was, do we keep our own names when we get to the spirit world? And as far as I'm aware, the answer is yes. It's actually the opposite, Rosemary. Oh. Do we do we keep our spiritual names? Oh, you mean, are we named prior to coming here? Yes. So I'm asking Grey Eagle, and Grey Eagle is said, saying to me exactly what uh, he's often said to me, what is in a name? A name means nothing. His name for me is his little flower. Uh, so, um, uh, so I'm going to say to you, what is in the name? A, a name actually means uh, very little in the bigger scheme of things. However, uh, those of you who were at the uh, the angel webinar, and I didn't mention this, and Gregor didn't mention this actually, when we were through the webinar, but a few weeks ago, 
our darling earth angel uh, passed and um, it was interesting. Uh, I had a client who um, whose uh, daughter was having uh, a new baby and uh, their family had heard about uh, Tomas, our earth angel, and had specifically said, we'd like you to call him Tomas after the earth angel. And the amazing thing was that they had already chosen that name anyway. So um, what is in a name? Chris. Um, oh, I'm going to scroll up to see the person's name. I went scrolling too far. Well, the, the, the question is, my son-in-law at home with cancer, facing additional surgery and possible chemo, was just told his job will let him go if he doesn't show up on January 3rd, possibly losing their health insurance. Can you ask Gray Eagle if he will lose his job and insurance? Well, guess what we'll do? We'll do even better than that, we hope. Chris, maybe you could put this young man on our healing list. We will send him prayers and we will pray for all of you. All I can say is this, you know, when I go back uh, through my life, and this is not going to help you one little bit right now, any of you, but when I go back through my life and I see all the desperate times or what I considered in, no, in, in, in those times, desperate times, when I see all those desperate times that I thought I would never get through, when I was going through situations that I felt honestly and genuinely would be the end of me uh, as the person that I, you know, that I was. Um, when I went through those desperations, and many, many, many of you out there will have had these same experiences, the things that you think you will never get through, all of a sudden you're through them. And they become memories and you look back on them and you might not look look back on them with a lot of love but you look back at them and you and you marvel at the fact that not only did you get through those times but that you learned from those times and those are the times and these difficult times of ours are the times that teach us and they are the times that, that teach us about strength they teach us about uh, faith they teach us about so many good things. Um, we are, uh, as souls, indestructible, you know. Uh, but until we are going through it and then out the other side, it's very hard to see that. But you will survive this. You and your son-in-law, your family, you will survive this. But we shall definitely put you in our, on our healing list and so send a lot of our energy out there to you also. All right, Chris, you're just about at time, but we had a question via email. A person found out um, or they wanted healing when we put their name on the healing list and they found out they were suddenly afraid because their church doesn't believe in this sort of thing. Yes. You know... I think this is an email that I've received. So here's the thing. There are lots of uh, different beliefs, religious, religious and other. There are lots of different beliefs and there are lots of different belief systems. Um, there are lots of people who say, I would never do this, I would never do that until it comes down to it. Uh, there are lots of people who uh, doggedly follow um, a religious belief system which is often uh, a dictatorship of sorts um, and uh, so I would I would you know like you all to understand this the Bible and as much as I love the Bible and as much as I am a Christian and as much as I believe in God and as much as I believe in Christ's teachings the Bible was written by man the rules of the game, the rules of the religion. It doesn't matter what religion you support. It doesn't matter what belief system you're involved with. It doesn't matter who you have listened to. The rules of any religion are written by man. 
and man is fallible. Man makes mistakes. Man doesn't know everything. I know there are a lot of people who think I know everything, and I don't. I mean, what I know sort of can't, you know, probably leave room on my little fingernail. Um, uh, you have to, in these circumstances, and with any with any uh, life altering situation that you have, with anything that you that you feel strongly about, you have to follow your heart. God is not going to judge or condemn or destroy you if you don't believe in a man-made system. And these religions that we have all across the world, and as beautiful and as wonderful as many of them are, they are not infallible. They make mistakes. And what works for one person does not necessarily work for another person. You know, years and years and years ago, in, in a, I would say, Teresa, in the olden days, uh, in, the, in the times when Christ walked this earth, in the times of the, you know, the, the first religious systems coming into place, um, a, lot of the, uh, a, a lot of the teachers, a lot of the, the scribes, a lot of the priests and so on, they laid down these rules for a, for a reason. They laid down these rules because it enabled them to, to focus on and to control their congregation. Now, maybe they had to do that in those days. I'm not going to judge there. Maybe that's what they had to do. But as we have got older and wiser and we know more, we're able to discover more. Historians show us things that we didn't know. People tell us, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever read any of you, the, the, um, the lost books of the Bible. Uh, there, there are amazing accounts of how people have found different artifacts that tell us more of the history of, of, of religious belief systems. So for you, for the, this young lady who's so torn, um, I, I promise you're not going to burn in hellfire and damnation, although some people might disagree. <laughs> but you're not, because God is a good God, is a gentle God, is a kind God, our angels. Uh, and if you'd attended the, the uh, webinar, the angel webinar, you would have understood what I'm about to say. Our angels do not look down on us with judgment. There is no uh, idea of a retribution if we don't obey the rules and regulations. Our angels look down at us. Sometimes they look down at us with sad eyes when they see us uh, doing things that we perhaps shouldn't or they hear us saying things that we perhaps shouldn't say. Um, and when we are as they would want us to be for our sakes, not their sakes, but for our sakes, they only look on us with joy and with pride and with love. And that just came straight from Grey Eagle. So I cannot tell you, my darling, what you should or should not believe. Believe in love. Believe in kindness. Believe in joy. That's all you need to believe in. Those things exist for you. Um, find a way to them. Uh, and don't be afraid that you're going to do anything against God because if you ask God, steer me, guide me, that's exactly what he will do. People have so often said to me, how can you do this? This goes against God. You should believe in God. Well, guess what? My belief in God is absolute. And I have asked him over the years again and again and again and again. And I absolutely know, without a doubt, that if I were doing the wrong thing, he would have hauled me off by now and said, no, 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 that's not right, Rosemary. You either believe in God and you believe that if he allows you to continue with these things, then it's the right thing and it's the right way to go, or you don't. I mean, it's up to you. So for all of you out there coming into our next year, 2021, Please have a very, very blessed rest of the day. Have a wonderful and a beautiful New Year, New Year's Eve. We are going to sit here. We're going to watch a movie. We always let my grandson stay up at night time. We're going to 
We're actually going to uh, watch the ball drop for all of two minutes and then we'll probably go back to the movie. Um, I'm making a trifle later on today. Yes, because tomorrow's New Year's Day, so we have a few people coming over to eat something and, and, and maybe even to drink something. So I'm making my fabulous, famous trifle. Uh, so we shall be having a wonderful day with friends. I hope for all of you out there that you're doing the same, whether it's on Skype, whether it's on FaceTime, whether it's, you know, sort of on one of these little machines, uh, or, or whether you're able to see people in person, that's, that's that whichever way it works. Count your blessings, would you, please, today? Because no matter how rotten a year we've had some of us, you've had some of you, no matter how awful a year it has been, there are a thousand, thousand blessings in there also. And a thousand blessings, blessings that we didn't necessarily want, but we should be grateful for. So please count your blessings. Would you all please have a wonderful and a happy rest of the day and uh, celebrate the sun rising. Uh, celebrate the sun rising on a new year, a new day, a new year. Uh, and uh, let's make it the best we can possibly make it. A happy, happy, happy New Year to all of you. Uh, and uh, we shall see you on uh, Saturday, I think, for story time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, please email me or email Chris, K R I S, Chris at rosemaryaltair.com or rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com and go to the website. And don't forget, share, share, share. Would you? Would you share? Please, will you share? Bye-bye, everybody.